Welcome to this slightly different video review of the Monster Gen 3. It's the 650 kilometer update video review. This time not stood in a studio, but we went out and did some filming of the wheel itself in action and I'm doing a voiceover. Bit different, but thought we'd give it a go. So how have I been getting on with the wheel? I have been getting on a storm. Now, of late, I haven't had a lot of time to ride. So actually this is taking an age to actually get to fruition. So we're at 650 kilometers. It has not let me down once. This thing has romped along with no issues whatsoever. As you can see in the footage, it handles the terrain really, really well, whether that's road or whether that's off-road. Now it has to be noted that this is a 22 inch wheel. So to get the thing moving, takes a little bit more leaning, bit more persuasion, shall we say, to get it going. And the same for when it breaks, it's not as sharp as an 18 inch or indeed a 16 inch wheel. So the smaller diameter wheel you buy, typically the more torque it's got if it's smaller. I've been riding this without any pads on the side whatsoever. It would definitely be enhanced if you did. You can garnish a bit more torque and a bit more braking out of any wheel with pads on the side. So you can get those super boost pads from speedyfeet.co.uk or you can go and get them elsewhere. Many different styles and types to suit your needs. This of course being such a big bodied wheel, it's got plenty of real estate to actually attach those pads to. So it's the perfect specimen really to actually attach some pads to the side. As I say, you will get more out of this wheel if you do have them attached, but you don't have to. So since I've been riding, since about 2014, 15, something like that, no, I've never really ridden with them. We've done a video on it, go and check it out. It'll be linked below or just your top right now if you're on a mobile. You can go and click that and have a look. Uh, we fitted some Clark pads to the Monster Pro and it made a world of difference to that machine which is an even bigger wheel than this massive wheel. I found riding it with a slightly lower PSI being a little bit better really for off-road. So it just helps you take some of that whip out of the hitting logs, stones and things like that. The thicker tire for the 22 inch tire is more like a motorbike tire. So it actually it can withstand some of those slams a little bit more than the traditional cycle tire that is on unicycles. This one's got a bit of a thicker tire sidewall to it. So you don't get pinching the inner tube quite so much. Uh, with the risk when running lower PSI, of course, is you pinch the inner tube. If it is indeed fitted with an inner tube and it's not tubeless, you run that risk of pinching it. Um, so I always tend to go a slightly harder PSI. But with this one, just lowering it a little bit less, sort of running around about 25, 28 PSI, if I'm doing an off-road stint, I find it actually runs a lot smoother on the off-road stuff. Doesn't make the knees ache quite as much. And of course, you do get slightly less mileage when you lower down the PSI. Um, but it does add to that suspension feel. I carry with me the uh, mobile inflator pump that we do. Uh, link below again. Uh, you can go and check that out. That is really, really handy to have with me. It's also got a USB port so I can charge up my phone, especially if we're out filming and things like that. Charge the phone and the GoPro etc so where this is kind of lacking i suppose is its single charge port you can get a port splitter we used to do them we don't anymore but you can get them they're on the market or you can diy your own as long as you know what you're doing of course if you don't it could be very dangerous to do that um, but you could split it but otherwise as standard it comes with a single port i've been charging it with a five amp charger but it comes with a three amp charger which is still pretty quick but if you're doing a lot of mileage and trying to stack it in, then of course, the quicker you can charge, the better. Uh, I don't go above a five amp charger, I find that enough. But of course, if you had two three amp chargers, you'd get a little bit more out of it perhaps, or a five amp and a three amp, if you had a splitter. I found the headlights to be spot on, give plenty, the dual headlights give plenty of light. In fact, probably a little bit too much, um, especially on the road, so if you're heading downhill, uh, obviously at night with cars coming in the direction I have had people flash me because what happens of course is the foot plates are leveling out so when you go down it tends to pull the body of the wheel up this is the problem with all unicycles but with such good lights on the front it does actually can blind the drivers coming the other direction the rear of the monster I find 
flashing lights. Not so sure about that. When you lean back, the brake light does come on, so it's one strip. I think I prefer just a, a duller rear light and then bright when you brake. That um, would sort of suit me. But this has been the same with all the monsters since Gen 1, which we did a thousand miler on. So I'm very, very familiar with these monsters um, as they are. It's the same form factor essentially as the one we did the thousand miler on in 13 days for charity. It's the same thing. It has got a lift button and it's a slightly stronger shell to this one than the ones we rode. But other than that, it's pretty much the same. Uh, well, with a stark difference with the batteries. So this is, I think it's a 1845 watt hour. Uh, at 100 volts, whereas the one we did the 1000 mile on was 2400 watt hour, so more battery capacity, but at 84 volts. So this one gives you a little bit more torque out the box, essentially, but with a little bit less range as well. So it doesn't do the range that the 2400 watt hour would do, but you get a bit more of a torquey response to it. So it's been doing really well. If you want to check out the range test we did, go and look at the first video we did, uh, the unboxing and range test video. Um, but otherwise, and other than that, it's performed flawlessly, literally no issues whatsoever. Very comfortable on the road. It can be off-roaded, but of course, it's quite a big wheel. But then with the big wheel does come taking the bumps a bit more. So it's pretty sweet for riding there as well. One thing it definitely lacks is a mud guard. <laughs> Common problem. Always going to moan about it. We've actually, in the previous one we had, uh, we fitted a MSX mudguard to it, which we do sell on the site. I haven't fitted it to this one, but I do need to, because we're now heading into winter. As I say, it's taken so long to actually stick some miles on it. Riding it in the summer, it's now switched to winter, but it does get mud all up your back. I find the foot plates held up really, really well. The fact that they're black, they used to be silver. I think it looks much nicer now with the black foot plates just a, a good look very rarely scuff them so they're higher up with that 22 inch wheel so they're not really really low and hitting every single rock it's only on the rare occasion i'll actually ground them on something um, it tends to just float over the top of everything so that's pretty good i found a little bit of wear on the side pads that come as standard as i say you might just want to swap them out for uh, boost pads or whatever you want to call them um, because the ones that come with it, I found I grip it quite tightly, especially when off-roading, and it does wear them down. They're only thin, but they are soft. Um, so, yeah, that's kind of a, a point to note. They have ground in a little bit. It's going to happen. They're almost a sacrificial part. Uh, I have dropped it a couple of times. Nothing's fractured, nothing's broken. They're not mega falls, but nonetheless, I have dropped it. No breaks whatsoever. The power button and the USB port on it, don't really use USB ports. I don't know if any of you guys do. Comment below if you do use USB port on your wheel. I don't. I would rather in its place a second charge port, if I'm honest. I can always carry a battery bank with me if I want to. Um, so I'm not really that keen on it. Doesn't really need a lift switch off button. Um, but it, I, mean, I suppose it helps. It still performs fine. It's just that the amount of times I'm lifting this up steps is more or less zero. So that kind of brings me on to points I've already covered in the previous videos, which is it's probably a bit big and a bit heavy to be commuting continuously on. But other than that, it's excellent. And I know loads of our customers actually do commute on them just because it's such a nice wheel to ride on the road. It's got a lot of presence. It's got a lot of hold because of its weight and size. So it's very maneuverable, very controllable um, for its size. So it is a popular wheel and it still is. It still remains a really, really good wheel. So the, this form factor, as I say, it's been out for quite a while, but there's a reason for that. It does actually work really well. You're not gonna get the fastest speed out of it. You're not gonna get the biggest range out of it in comparison to other wheels on the market, but it's form factor and it's 22 inch wheel along with the tire. It, there's something about it that makes it such a nice wheel to ride whether on road or trails for tight rutted downhill i uh, wouldn't suggest it at all it will do it but it'll be much more work than a more nimble wheel but of course the smaller wheel you go typically the less range you get um so as an all-rounder it's a it's a big hitter as an all-rounder I would say I would like a mud guard on it. You can get them, fit the MSX mud guard onto it. You've got to screw into the shell. Um, did that on my previous monster. No issue there, um, but you do have to screw into the shell to get it on. 
I've had no issues with it in terms of the, as I say, when I've dropped it, the fracturing. Um, it's held the water out quite well when I've been riding it in the rain. There's no unicycle out there really that they recommend you ride in hard rain. This one I have, I've been caught out a few times. It's been absolutely fine. Um, so yeah, I'm going to continue riding it until I get to the thousand kilometre uh, review of it. But so far, it's a thumbs up from me. And one thing I do like actually is the tyre it tends to ward off thorns um, more. So I'm getting, basically I hardly ever get punctures anyway, but I went through a load of fresh cuttings the other day and there's nothing I could do about it. They're all over the road and no issue whatsoever because it's more of a motorbike tire. You tend to get away with it a bit more. Um, so that was something I wanted to note really. Uh, the fan's pretty noisy. If you stood still, you would have heard that in the other videos because we're doing them in summer, but there again, I tend to think flipping it is a good thing. It's cooling it down. Um, not getting the fan come on as much, of course, now because it's freezing cold. Filming at the moment, it's about one degree. Um, so, yeah, it's um, it's going spot on. I will report back at 1,000 kilometres. I suspect it will carry on just as it has been. No issues whatsoever. Um, but, yeah, any questions on this, let me know or go to electricpeople.org and just comment on there. You can tag me in it using the app um, symbol. But... Yeah, I think that pretty much covers it off. There's not really a massive amount to say because it's still working fine. I've had no issues, no bearing issues, anything like that whatsoever. Spot on. So, of course, if you want to find one of these wheels, the Gen 3, we have got them in. So we buy, tend to buy in stuff that works still. So speedyfeet.co.uk. Go and check them out. See what you think. Um, I hope this video's helped. As I say, if I've missed something out or there's a burning question you've got, just simply comment below or give us an email info at speedyfeet.co.uk and I'll be sure to help you out. Now I'm gonna leave you with some more footage of this lovely Bentley of a machine and I will see you on the thousand kilometer review.